Recording in progress. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's elephant professional lecture with um, with the man who first showed me an African elephant. Many, well, I don't, can't even remember how many years ago it was when I landed in Amboseli and got in the car and he said, oh, there's some elephants over there. We'll go and see them later. Um, and uh, living in Asia, um, I know when you see an elephant, you rush towards it because you don't get a chance to see it. And I was wondering what on earth you were playing at, Eric. And uh, But finally, I worked out with Amboseli. There's, there are always elephants over there. So here we are, right from the heart of Elephant Central from Amboseli National Park. We have Eric, um, who is, uh, is, well, I haven't seen him for such a long time, excited to see you, and you're among elephants. So tell us a little bit, a bit about what you're doing and where you are, and uh, we'll go from there, Eric. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, John. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Eric Olekalama from uh, Amboseli National Park in Kenya. I'm very next to Kilimanjaro. You can see it just behind me. Um, this park is well known for its population of elephants. We have got a uh, quite good number of elephants, uh, about 1800 elephants plus, because we have got a uh, very um, quite new baby elephants. It's from last year, about maybe 200 elephants, baby, baby elephants. Um, so, our elephants are very protected here um, because the government, this is a national park, but the community that, uh, that lives around the park is the Maasai community and that's where I come from. And we, we work closely with the government and uh, non-government organizations who are working in conservation to save these elephants. Uh, we had problems with poaching many years ago, uh, still there, but actually, it's not a problem anymore. Um, what we have, the big problem we have now is uh, space uh, because the, the land surrounding the park uh, are being demarcated or they're on their private owned lands now. So that's the challenge we have, but uh, the elephants are still there and they're still <laughs> roaming around. Um, uh, this is my home. This is where I was born, raised, got the education I got here and decided to work here. And this is where I, end, I will end my, my life. And uh, so I dedicated my life into conservation. Um, I started working for the Elef Amboseli Trust for Elephants, the, the organization that are doing a study of uh, elephants, the behavior and the monitoring uh, their life here in Amboseli ecosystem. And then later on, I went to Totilis Camp uh, tourist uh, lodge. That's where I met uh, John when I was a guide there. Um, but now I left Totilis in 2016, and now I'm doing my own uh, tours and and working in conservation, helping the the Kenya Wildlife Service and the Amboseli Trust for Elephants. Yes. Great. Um... Could you is is it possible to turn the camera to, to switch the camera around and see if you can show us some? Uh... I know we have trouble <laughs> finding finding quite distant to show us some of the, some of the surroundings. I know you had trouble finding a, a signal earlier. Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, there's some elephants, quite a number of them. They're heading towards Kilimanjaro now. Okay. Uh, though there's a group coming, but it will be like mm, towards the west in the sun side, but. Maybe they'll come closer to me and I'll be able to, to show you. Um, yeah. You know, now they're they leaving the park, they're leaving the marshes, going to our land, the Mass Island. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, because they, 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 the Amboseli elephants never spend a night in the park, inside the park. They go to, to our land, outside the park, to browse, because as you see, it's very flat, open, no bushes, no, no trees. And you know, elephants, they need a lot of food, big quantity of food. Yep. Yeah, elephant needs like 5% of its of it body, body weight uh, to eat. So like a six ton elephant needs about 250 to 300 kilos of grass a day. So these, these soft grass cannot sustain them. So they have to go all the way to, to the Maasai territory area to browse because there are a lot of acacia trees there, other type of uh, shrub. So they're leaving now. 
So they have, I call it a daily migration. They live in the evening and then they come back in the morning to the park to create a room for the Maasai cows, uh, sheep and goods. So they try to avoid uh, conflicts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the, the park, the marshes are, are they full year round with water? Sorry? The, the marshes are full year round. That's another attraction for them to come back to the park to drink or, or, yes. or and yeah. also to, to make yeah, room. For all them. year round. Uh, there, we have quite a number of uh, springs in the park uh, that form these uh, uh, massive swarms. So water is not a problem at all. No, I'm looking. The whole whole place is looking very very green. Yeah, they we're fantastic. Um, you've recently had I don't know if you can talk about it or not. You've recently had problems or, or a lot of big international news about uh, not you personally, but the, the farm and the an avocado farm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a very big problem, <laughs> um, and it's a very it's a challenge for me because that's the road I take every single day when I okay. the park my home so i see it every single day and it's it's not fun because it is big fences coming in and um yeah uh that killy killyavo they call it um a farm they block it it's one of the elephant corridor that connects used to connect uh elephants from mamboseli going to sabo okay or another sanctuary called kimana sanctuary so now the the, the, the corridor is getting very limited or it's kind of, if we don't do anything now, then the elephants here will be just like in a cage. Yeah, and as you've already said, there's not enough actually in, within the park for the, to sustain them. They have to go out into the, into the, the, the lowlands, into the, the, the higher areas with, with the trees and everything else in order to survive. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other, other wildlife in the park? Is it doing is it doing well or is it? Uh, yeah, we have uh, plenty of uh, zebras, wildebeest, and uh, as well uh, gazelles, uh, the pumbas, the warthogs, and lions, cheetahs. We have them and hyenas. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just got back to the car because I see uh, tourist vehicles coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> <You're>... um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That's good as well. So, is it a good year for tourism? It can't have been a good year for tourism, but mainly, mainly from local, from from Kenyan tourism. Yeah, just Kenyan tourism, uh, because now the the international tourism tourism is still uh, a challenge. Um, Travelling restrictions and, and all these things. Um, yeah, but uh, we are expecting a few people to start travelling, maybe from this month or next month. Uh, for the high season okay if if, if everything goes <laughs> if they don't uh, change these uh, 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 rules again <laughs> exactly well, <that's>... the government <laughs> yeah. my same in thailand as well if the rules keep changing but the borders of kenya they're, they're open people can travel if they want to yeah it, it is open yeah they're open. okay it, yeah, that's people good. can travel yeah oh, yeah here in Thailand, we're a little bit stuck. The borders are still closed, so people people can't get in. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's a problem uh, in tourism because it's uh, many people, especially the people live who lives near the parks and our game reserves. They relied in, in in tourism, especially. I mean, so lots of people lost their jobs and. Yeah, some camps here are closed. Um, yeah, it's a problem. So we hope these errors will will die, and we'll be able to. <laughs> yeah. Is that is the lack of tourism job? Is that is that causing is that causing problems with say bushmeat hunting or a rise in poaching and things like that? Um. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this has contributed uh, people to do poaching uh, because you can imagine someone who has no job who used to have a job and no job now and so people start doing that like things like that but um poaching has been there and uh, 
people, especially the ones who live near the towns, and and we have those uh, game reserves, and uh, and they 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 sneak into the park even before the the corona thing. Okay. But uh, luckily now we we are very animals are quite uh, uh, secure because we have uh, uh, community rangers rolling out there in the in the community land and as well in the park we have got uh, government rangers working together uh, you know it's still a challenge you know trying to <laughs> um, stop a human like you to go into you know, get whatever they want yes but uh, at least it's it's getting better and better but we're putting more effort to making sure that uh, these wildlife uh, very much protected. <laughs> that's that's very good news. Yeah. And uh, how's the weather been? Get plenty plenty of rain. It does look very green there. Is there is there water in the lake? Uh, there's uh, yeah, just a small amount now uh, because this year we the rain is not that very. Um, it's, we got less rain. We okay. we just received very less rain there. The, the greenish you're seeing here is, is the marsh. Okay, that's from the that's from yeah. the springs. Yeah. So if you, if you drive out of this area, it will it will, it will look very very dry or greyish in color. Um, yeah. But um, in the western side of the park towards the Tillis, you know there, um, it, it it's it's quite better. They okay. Very long past there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the time that I can I can come I, it's, I can't remember the last time I was it must have been October October 2019 I think which is actually very very lucky to have gotten I think it was 2019 to have got there just before everything closed up um, uh, but really looking forward to coming coming and seeing seeing all the elephants again yeah yeah but you'll not find Eric at the Tillys again eh? <laughs> that? Eric is um, in the southern part of the park now. I know. I, I actually want to. Yes, I, I will come. And, I'll come and see you in the southern part and see see something a bit <laughs> different. Yeah, I'll be so happy to see. And actually, so so what? You tell us a bit about your business now. How's the, obviously business is a bit a bit poor because of the lack of tourism. But if if in when when tourism comes back, when when international tourists can come, what what do you do? What can you what can you show them apart from elephants, of course? Um. <laughs> um we 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 have lots of uh, all the wildlife here um but you know eric in you've known eric as an elephant man um yeah. and most of my clients even if they like uh wildebeest and zebras they they actually when they live here they come here and stay here for a few days and they go back the next safari they come back when they come back they'll come they come back as uh, elephant lovers <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh business my business is uh actually it's a challenge now yeah uh, because of uh you know everything was shut down march 2020 yep and uh i i started my own company and uh at the same time like two months before corona landed here I I started constructing a camp, attended camp. Oh. So when everything was crushed by Corona, I decided yeah. to stop <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wait a bit to see how things are. But uh, as I see things are going slowly by slowly improving, I started trying to fix some things here and there to make to to see if my dream comes true. <laughs> um, yeah, because when I started there, I leased uh, like 420 acres of land yeah. for elephants because where I, I am putting a camp, it's a bull area uh, um, section in the park. They, we have, uh, that's where we have big bulls. So I decided to lease, um, to talk to one of, I mean, a, a number of my community members here uh, in around that area and took over their land and pay them annually so yeah it's a challenge yeah uh, yeah <laughs> uh, 
because as I told you that uh, the, the problem we have here is space. That's why I jumped in and tried to yeah. establish as much, as much as I can to make sure that uh, this, those creatures can still have a space to roam around without having a lot of uh, yeah, structures or, or fences like Kiliavo to block yeah. the market or grazing area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are, are you still able to hold on to the land and your uh, your landlords are, are, are being uh, a little bit helpful to you or is it, uh, it's obviously a challenge, but is it as big a challenge as you? <laughs> You know, the challenge is once you sign the lease, it mm -hmm. means that you have to pay. Yeah, yeah. So I am, um, since last year, I've been using my my all savings to make sure that uh, they will not uh, come to me and like, hey man, if we, if, yeah, we are going to take over our land. So <laughs> hoping that things will be better and business comes back and then I'll be able to, to, to go on because I, I don't yeah it's to me it's a challenge because seeing people coming in there and start farming and doing all those things that not yeah. friendly to conservation and environment it's it's a disaster so now I'm using my own savings to to pay them because yeah you have to pay them yeah, okay, yeah. And otherwise, and you've sold them on the idea of um, it, it's. I mean, this is. I it's. It's a personal challenge for you, but it's something we hear, unfortunately, in so many places that people are sold. Community members are sold on the idea of conservation and tourism, and suddenly this whole this whole program that's come through. So I, 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 I totally understand what's happening. I think. Um. So. Uh. So. People can when if they want to come and visit you. Uh, hopefully, we have a few people coming to visit. What's <laughs> Well, what's the name of the camp or do they can they just contact me is it ready to have a name and to be marketed or are you you are keeping you don't have a name yet it has a camp it is called elephant garden camp elephant garden camp yeah okay perfect we were when, they, when we come to Amboseli, we will come and see you for sure if we when we <laughs> when we're allowed back into kenya <laughs> Yeah, I will be so happy to see you guys oh, yeah. and so i mean what makes it such a good area for big bulls uh, because it has a lot of uh, vegetation and uh, uh, it's not a very disturbed area, if I put it that way, before yeah. people then coming in and uh, putting some villages and and some there's some quite a number of uh, camps there. But uh, it has been a bull area since. And uh, you remember the very famous boys mm -hmm. uh, of Amboseli? Tim, Craig, and Tolstoy, and all those yep, guys. Yep. That is the area, and that's why I decided to go there. Okay. Because, I mean, they, 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 because there's there's a lot of uh, vegetation there, the the acacia trees, um, yeah, all sort of shrubs, and also they can they can access water because it's very close to the park headquarters uh, offices. Okay. So the water there, yeah. they, they made a dam and pump in water from a bowl for them to drink. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm planning to put uh, a dam next to my camp. As well, <laughs> <to keep. laughs> That's a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's actually community land rather than them being inside the park. And um, I guess for for those of those people who don't know Amboseli, um, can you can you give give some idea of how how close and uh how close the community land is to the park and how i mean for, for me it was it's always amazing you're, you're driving along and, and and suddenly you're outside the park then you're in a conservancy then you're and the, the way the wildlife and the people in the community all all work together can you can you give us some better description of that for it for people who don't know it um you know the amboseli national park is in the middle of uh, our land as the maasai community and, uh, you know, as Maasai, we are conservationists by nature. We, we grew up seeing these wildlife, sharing the same land. And, and one thing that actually we decided to live with them, it's because we believe that God has given us cows, sheep and goats, so that we don't go for wild animals to poach them or to do anything, to harm them in any, uh, uh, so for us, there's that respect between 
um, us and the wildlife. You know, when I was driving you around in, at the Interior Conservancy, you can see young, young boys herding or taking care of the cows. And uh, after a few meters, there's a lion or there's an elephant, but it's not a problem at all. Um, so we are actually very, I mean, we have, our land is very connected to the park and there's no boundary. There's no fence, nothing. You just cross and you go in. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, animals are very independent here uh, because they, 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 they know that this area belongs to them. Even if the are here. <laughs> you guys are there protecting them. And then in the park again, they, even KWS and everybody else. Yeah. yeah. But most, most of the, most of the wildlife don't really stay in the park. They can only come during the day for water. Oh, okay. 90% of this wildlife in this ecosystem, they, they reside in the Maasai territory as our land. Um, because even during the daytime, some of these animals, they don't really need to drink every single day. So they can just stay out there for two days and then they come back the other day to take, drink water and go out there because there's plenty of uh, vegetation or a variety of food for them to, uh, to eat. Yeah, perfect. Okay, um, Nisa, you're still online. Do, is there, are there any questions on the Facebook? Or do you have any questions, Nisa? Uh, so no question from the Facebook quite yet, but I don't know what to ask really. But um, so I'm the veterinarian that I work with John. So I'm the doctors for the elephants here, but I work with the Asian one, obviously. But um, so what kind of help are you guys getting for in case elephants were to say, get hurt or they get trapped or I don't know, God forbid, poached or something. Basically, how does, how does the system work over there, I guess? Is there someone gonna go on, I don't know, a car or helicopter? What's the process kind of thing? Um, yeah, thank you for your question. Um, Yes, we have an organization called uh, uh, Devin Sheldrick that they they have got, uh, which working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service. Um, they have, uh, yeah, they have helicopters and they have uh, these aeroplanes, many small aeroplanes that they can fly anywhere. But we have, um, we are on the, like here in Amboseli, we are on the ground here. Uh, we patrol using our trucks. Uh, it's a Land Rover. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, when we, whenever we see an elephant uh, uh, problem, we call them, they fly down, or maybe sometimes, luckily they might be on the ground, because sometimes they come even in the park just to do patrol and, and just be on standby, uh, and they come and treat At the elephant, put the elephant down, we treat the elephant, and just let him go and we keep on monitoring. A few months ago, we, have, we got a, a young male elephant. I've got some photos of him. Uh, so we put him down and uh, treated him. And now he's, he's doing well. Perfect. So, yeah, so mostly it would be uh, uh, the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust doing the veterinary thing. With KWS and you guys as guides being being the spotters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see a group of elephants. Um. <laughs> let's let's see what we can do. <laughs> if we can get the signal. Let me, let me try and drive there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully the signal stays out. Thank you very much for trying that. <laughs> Wait, for those of you who don't know, um, Eric was driving. We were a little bit late starting because Eric was driving around looking for decent wildlife, decent signal. <laughs> I promise you, there are lots of elephants in Amboseli, but not where the where the good signal is. I think where I am now, I think I have got a signal. Okay. Um, I just want to show you these guys. Yeah, please. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll let you drive, Eric. We'll let you drive. Just maybe one and a half minutes, something there. Eh? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> now we're getting excited. <laughs> So while we're driving there, before we lose signal, I'll do it. Oh, here we go. Aha. <laughs> the thing with national parks, for those who don't know, uh, so Eric, in a national park, Eric is not allowed to, uh, not allowed to drive off the road. He has to stay, to the, stay on the road and wait for the, uh, wait for the elephants to come to him, um, which again, isn't the problem if you also don't have to, if you have a all day and you don't have to stick in signal, but um, it can become a bit of a problem if you have to, uh, <laughs> if you have to stay in signal and you only have limited time. Okay. The elephants. I don't know whether you can. Uh, yeah, can you see those uh, small dots? Yes. Sugar. They are coming. Coming yeah, they're coming this way. They'll come and uh, just uh, cross the road uh, next to me. Uh, yeah, but very soon I'll get those um, permissions to go off road. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, last week, I think like 10 days ago, um, I was appointed as a honorary warden. Oh, well, um, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, but they still have to give me a confirmation letter and, and everything. A, a, a honorary warden is a person who is, uh, I'll be given uh, powers to even to arrest anybody who goes, uh, who does, like if I find poachers or I find somebody breaking rules in the park, going off road, I am, uh, I can arrest. <laughs> Some wildebeest and zebras running there, hundreds of them. I don't know whether you can give me oh, wow. They're far away. They're far away. Uh, the, yes, the, and the, the sun going down. The sun is going down. <laughs> um, I think I should just uh, show you these guys uh, quickly before the light uh, disappear. No, no, no. It's um. Sorry, sorry. It's. I'm still on microphone. No, the, Eric's Eric's muted himself, so we can't hear the, uh, the 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 electric Land Rover he's got. Either that, or he has an electric Land Rover, but I don't think so yet. I think it's he's muted himself. The engine working. Okay. Oh, there's an elephant. I I can see. Oh, look at me. Leo. Leo, come. come. Elephant. John, I cannot. We cannot see um video if you're speaking. Let's speak. Yes, oh. Yeah, so this is this is a family. These are females and babies. Um, they're just like maybe three meters away from me and uh, they're having their last bites before they start the, the safari going to the woodland for the night. Oh, 
if you look at that, this lady here, <laughs> she's really looking at me to making sure that I don't get closer to her baby. <laughs> and these are wild elephants. Uh -huh. this, this, this. <laughs> you can tell me by. Yeah, sorry, Eric, I'm keeping quiet because apparently when I talk, they just see my face. So <laughs> I want to show everybody the elephants. I think I've got you pinned now, but um, wow. How many out there in this herd, by the way? Sorry to interrupt now is good. John, you can speak. Oh, thank you. <laughs> how, how many in this herd, Eric? These are... Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen of them. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's <laughs> Amboseli for you. <laughs> and a good, and a fantastic guide as well, of course. Maybe going that's, around that that just looks different from the Asian one. Like I don't know. It's just a different vibe. I did. Yeah, well, obviously very different. Well, we obviously different species, but yes, a very different. The thing with, and we'll let Eric drive for a second. The thing with uh, elephants, particularly in Amboseli, is they know certainly within the park they're safe. Um, and so you can, I wouldn't, unless you're Eric, I wouldn't advise getting out of the car. <laughs> but if you're sitting in a car, um, then uh, then generally they, they can just walk straight past you. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, the, the one thing I came to realize with these elephants, um, this, this organization, the, the research team that has been following these elephants since 1972, they have been using Land Rovers. And that's why I chose to uh, buy a Land Rover <laughs> because they love i think they love the sound of a land rover and they trust the land rover because they think that it is the uh the the the, the truck the research truck so um most of the time if i come on patrol and uh by myself i can just get out of the car start on the uh, just sit on the bonnet and enjoy the view <laughs> so yeah they're very friendly here it's only it depends on how you you handle them, I mean, how you treat them, but they can be very friendly. They can come and uh, touch the car and, you know, no problem. Well, fantastic, Eric. Thank you for finding us elephants. Thank you for actually, and more importantly, uh, the, the insight into your work and um, into what you're doing and the situation, and the tourism situation as well, that we've learned a lot. And for, uh, for making sure I, there aren't any questions coming through, I can, I can now read the question feed. There aren't any questions. I think you've covered everything, but I think everybody's going to be coming to Elephant Garden, Elephant Garden Camp when they, uh, when they can get to Amboseli. Um, yeah, a couple of both Nisa and Oh are going to go there for sure. Uh -huh. That's the sticker, eh? <laughs> and I'll make sure yeah. I, I'll make sure that the people I know are following you because I, as I say, I, I follow you on Facebook and have done since you since you showed me my first African elephant, um, and your your photographs are always amazing. Um, Thank you so much. Hanging around in those things, hanging around. We're well, not hanging around, working hard in Amboseli to protect the elephants, but can look like a, and and publishing great photographs and the odd live video and everything else. So. Um, 
in the absence of any questions, um, thank you very, very much for coming into the park today and for, for showing us a bit, of, a bit of your land and for telling you about the history and the work and everything else. Um, we will leave you in peace to enjoy your elephants. Um, we'll, we'll get back to wishing we were there and we'll go and play with our Asian elephants this afternoon or tomorrow morning, but we'll, we'll certainly wish we had a, we, we can come and see you as soon as possible. And um, if anybody does want to come, we'll push them in your direction and try and help you, uh, help you make sure you can keep that land for, safe for elephants. Um, thank you so much. From, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for doing this. Um, I'm so glad it worked out and there were, there were time zones and all these things and lack of signal, but very, very glad it worked out. And thank you very much, Eric. Um, do you want to say you, anything else just to finish off? Uh, I was, uh, just, um, um, oh, are you, you, you asking me or uh, something else? Yes, please. Yes, yes, you. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, I just, uh, um, I'm so happy to, interact with you all and uh, uh, kindly if you get time just come and see your visit will make a difference here in this ecosystem um, you'll be ambassadors to making sure that uh, you you take this word to your countries and um, tell the people back there uh, why we want to save these uh, magnificent creatures and so yeah you're very much welcome and I'll be here uh to receive you and take you around to show you the elephants of Amboseli National Park yep thank you so much perfect thank you very much thank you thank you for everyone in the audience we will see you see you tomorrow and I will keep following you and we'll we'll be in touch Eric and uh, as I say we'll come as soon as we can <laughs>